Good evening and welcome back to another episode of LTV News. The spring semester is off to a strong start. February is already here and with Punxsutawney Phil getting a glimpse of his shadow, spring is predicted to come early. I'm certainly looking forward to the warm weather, but in the meantime, we have plenty of exciting stories to share with you tonight. From a LaSalle rebrand campaign to the latest basketball, swimming, and water polo sport updates, and all the ways LaSalle is celebrating Black History Month here on campus. And from all the latest news beyond campus, we have an interesting story about Philadelphia's newest Lyft driver, some exciting and helpful news for all the mothers out there with newborns, and also the surprising rediscovery of an ancient reptile in Europe. All that and more right here on LaSalle TV News. Welcome back to LTV News, where we bring you everything from 20th and Olney Ave to Philadelphia and the world. My name's Maddie Geyer, and I'm so happy to be here for our seventh episode of the semester. And I'm Jackie Reyes. You're watching LTV News, LaSalle TV's hotspot for all the LaSalle and Philadelphia-related info and events. There's a lot to catch up on in the next half hour, so don't go anywhere, because for tonight's show, we have a lot of fun and interesting stories you won't want to miss. So let's get started. Looking for ways to immerse yourself in Black History Month this February? Members of the LaSalle community can find a variety of events and performances being offered on campus throughout the next few weeks. Tomorrow evening from 5 to 6.30, the Education Department is hosting a discussion panel on systems of domination in the Dan Rudden Theater. The African American Student League will host its Spirit Week going from the 12th to the 16th. Check out their Instagram for more information on daily themes and activities. The League will also be facilitating a TED Talk on Black Love on the 15th from 12.30 to 2 p.m. in the Dan Rodden Theater, as well as many other events. Dr. Frederick V. Engram, Associate Professor at Farley Dickinson University, will discuss his book, Black Liberation Through Action and Resistance, Move, on the 22nd, 6 p.m., also at the Dan Rodden Theater. Check out the weekly LaSalle event tab to see com a complete list of events from all of us here at LaSalle, have an inspiring and educational Black History Month. LaSalle University has launched a new brand campaign called Known For More to showcase its commitment to excellence and social justice. The campaign aims to highlight the university's unique approach to education and its dedication to creating graduates who are equipped with the skills and values needed to make a positive impact in the world. Through this campaign, LaSalle University hopes to attract students who are passionate about making a difference and who want to be part of the community that values service, diversity, and inclusivity. The university plans to promote the campaign through various channels including digital advertising, social media, and on-campus events. With knowledge more, known for more, LaSalle University aims to redefine what it means to be a LaSallean institution and to inspire its students to become leaders and change makers in their fields. LaSalle men and women's dive teams traveled to face the Westchester Golden Rams last Saturday and took first place in every event competed in. In both the one-meter dive and three-meter dive, the Explorer men's team took first and second place in both events. In the one-meter, Lucas DeCaney dove to a score of 288.60, followed up by his teammate Carter Randall, who scored a 236.10. In the three-meter, Randall took the top spot over his Explorer counterpart. Randall dove to a score of 262.13, while DeCaney finished with a 212.85 score. On the women's team, the results also proved to be great for the explorers in the both 1 and 3 meter. In the 1 meter, Tiffany Braun dove to first place finish with a score of 254.48. Braun was followed by Kelsey Waddington in second place with her point at 247.13. In the 3 meter, Braun took the top spot once again. Her score of 249.53 was good enough for the win. Waddington took fourth in this event and scored a 225.83. The swimmers had their last regular season dual meet on Saturday, and LaSalle's diving squad will be back in action at the Atlantic 10 Conference Championships starting on February 21st and wrapping up on the 24th. And now turning to LaSalle's the LaSalle's men's basketball, a crucial clash awaits as they hit the road for an Atlantic 10 faceoff against George Washington. The Explorers, eager to break the fourth game, four game losing streak, face a resilient George Washington squad led by scoring sensation James Bishop, the fourth. LaSalle's recent loss to Dayton showcased sophomore Andres Marrero, prowess, 
but highlighted challenges in the free throw attempts and turnovers. As the team square off, the revolutionaries aim to bounce back from a two-game slump. In the pivotal matchup, both squads V for dominance, with history favoring George Washington in the series, they lead 25 to 20. Stay tuned for the exhilarating showdown at 6 p.m. live on ESPN+. <clears throat> Plus. Shifting our focus back to the water, LaSalle women's water polo dove into their 2024 season with the resounding 18-9 victory against Mercyhurst Lakers. The Explorers, led by the standout performance of Francesca Coe, showcased their offensive prowess and defensive finesse. Coe dominated with six goals and 10 shots, while the dynamic trio of Grace Smith, Sophia Colavuo, and Claire Durham added to the scoreboard. The freshman goalkeeper, Lily Kirby, made a stunning debut not only with nine saves, but also contributing a goal. LaSalle's commanding performance sets the stage for the upcom upcoming Bruno Classic, promising more aquatic excitement. Next weekend, stay tuned for a splash in the pool. Think buying fake products is harmless? Think again. Counterfeits are made in unsafe conditions, potentially using hazardous and even lethal ingredients that could harm you and others. Each year, billions of dollars worth of counterfeit products are sold in the U.S. <sighs> I smell big crime. Think about it. If you don't know where the products came from, how could you know where the money goes? You're smart. Buy smart. Go for real. As birthplace to the first volunteer fire companies, Philadelphia is home to one of the nation's premier fire museums. Fireman's Hall Museum displays the city's fire history in addition to promoting fire safety. You can visit Fireman's Hall Museum in Old City at 147 North 2nd Street. Visit firemanshallmuseum.org to learn more or watch the museum's show, Curator's Corner on LaSalle TV. I'm worried about your parents. We need to show them how to spot phishing emails. Agree, the scammers are out of control. And we need to show them how to use a password manager. Plus, help them add multi-factor authentication. Yes, we use MFA at work and it's great. Great cake. I'll use MFA to verify my purchase. Software update? Done. Time to celebrate. For more information on how to keep yourself and those you care about safe online, go to cisa.gov forward slash secure our world. of a re-owned Philadelphia cheesesteak chain, Tony Luke Steaks, have been sentenced for their involvement in an $8 million tax fraud scheme. The couple pleaded guilty to charges of conspiracy, tax invasion, and filing false tax returns. They admitted to underreporting their income and inflating expenses for over a decade to avoid paying taxes. As part of the scheme, they used multiple bank accounts to conceal their actual revenue and made large cash withdrawals to fund personal expenses. The couple has been ordered to pay restitution and will serve prison sentences. If you've taken a rideshare recently, you may have been picked up by a very famous figure. Michael Dennis Grant, known for wearing a white robe and blasting gospel music from his Acura, has returned to the streets, this time as a Lyft driver. Grant was known for walking around Center City while wearing his robe and carrying a shepherd's crook, speaking to the public about the Bible. This gave him his famous nickname, Philly Jesus, and garnered lots of attention on social media. He took a hiatus from performing following the deaths of his father and grandmother, but has recently returned to the public eye through his rideshare employment. Grant says, I pick up a passenger and they see me dressed like this, and I say, Jesus is taking the wheel today. It's one of the most exciting times in someone's life, but bringing home a newborn baby can be a scary time for new mothers, adjusting to their new life ahead. 
New Jersey officials are doing what they can to make the time as easy and stress-free for new parents with the new Family Connects program. This new program will offer moms of newborns free at-home health visits for the first two weeks after delivery, so they don't have to leave the house. Nurses will check on the baby's well-being and give physical and mental health checks to the mother. They will also give postpartum education and tips on things like eating and sleeping. This program will help mothers feel comfortable and healthy without leaving their home or having to worry about exposing their newborns to the germs of the doctor's office. This program is free to all families in Essex, Middlesex, Mercer, Gloucester, and Cumberland counties. Regardless of income, insurance, or immigration status, officials have confirmed that mothers across, the New, Jer across New Jersey are taking advantage of this helpful program, and more than 60 families have already signed up. The annual Philadelphia Flower Show is returning to the Pennsylvania Convention Center. If you're thinking about attending but have never been, Donnie and I had the chance to attend last spring, and this footage may inspire you to take the trip. Let's take a look. Yeah, so we are in the entrance garden at the Philadelphia Flower Show. Uh, we've named the garden Flora Struck because you're supposed to be kind of taken aback and take, get your breath taken away when you enter this garden. It's a juxtaposition of color and texture and shape and light, and that's what this garden is kind of all about. This show is a very old show. <laughs> started many, many, many years ago as just a place where people could show their plants. And now it has become this incredible experience. We have 32 major exhibitors that come from all over the world to show their craft, landscape architecture, floral design, and we have a lot of other amazing experiences for guests to participate in as well. So it's a show, but then there are things to do. We have great activities for families. We have great things to create and crafts. Um, we have amazing music to listen to. So it's an amazing um, experience for all of our guests, young and old. A lot goes into it. So we begin this process. As soon as the last show ends, we start the new. So it is a year-long process. And actually, our last show happened eight months ago, so it was an even shorter time that we had to produce this event. Um, so months and months and months of planning. And then the load-in time to get in here, though, is pretty short, actually. We're here for a week and a half. And all of this happens in that time period. So it's a very compressed load-in um, to get to this place. Um, we're in it. <laughs> this is my favorite one. The entrance garden is incredible. The lights, the music, the color. Um, it is everything we dreamed up to, it, to be. If you see the renderings that we produced leading up to the show, they really mirror this experience that was created. So I love it. Um, it is so joyful and it's amazing to see the guests come in and truly like be wowed by what they're seeing. That flower art looks amazing. I would love to see it all in person. And if you feel the same way, you can purchase your tickets online now at phsonline.org slash The Flower Show. The 2024 show will take place from March 2nd to March 10th. They are open daily from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m. and will be closing at 6 p.m. on Sunday, the 10th. And just a little tip, if you want to save some money, it will be cheaper if you buy weekday tickets or family pack tickets. But no matter what they cost, you won't be disappointed. Pennsylvania State Treasurer Joe Torsella supports the budget proposal made by Auditor General Eugene DePasquale. The proposal suggests investing $300 million in the Southeastern Pennsylvania Transportation Authority, known as SEPTA, over the next five years to enhance the quality of public transit in the region. This funding would improve SEPTA's infrastructure, including budgets, or bridges, tunnels, stations, and help modernize its fleet of buses and trains. The investment aims to provide safer, more reliable, and accessible transportation options for commuters, benefiting both the economy and the environment. Additionally, the proposal emphasizes the importance of fiscal responsibility and accountability in managing public funds.
After four days of searching for escaped teen murder suspect Shane Pryor, U.S. Marshals have captured him. The 17-year-old was taken into custody after getting off the bus near 3rd Street and Roosevelt Boulevard on Sunday at 6.30 p.m. Police say Pryor was, was then taken to the Philadelphia Police Homicide Unit. To capture Pryor, U.S. Marshals had to board a septa bus, and during the arrest, Pryor was cooperative. While doing a pat-down search, they found the handcuff key in Pryor's pocket. Detectives could not pinpoint how long Pryor had the key or if he even used it. Pryor slipped police custody in the emergency room parking lot at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia around noon on Wednesday, January 24th. U.S. Marshal Supervisor Deputy Robert Clark on Friday provided an updated timeline of Pryor's escape. Authorities said Pryor was uncuffed and with two prison staff members when he managed to exit a vehicle in the emergency room parking lot and escape. Clark said accompanying prison staff members gave chase when Pryor fled and came within arm's length of catching the murder suspect. According to attorney DeMeo, Pryor and another teen were charged in killing 54-year-old Tanya Harris in an alleyway in northern East Philly back on October 10, 2020. A local 10-year-old boy's dream to visit Hawaii is about to come true. The young boy, Kelvin from Westchester, has been fighting for his life since he was diagnosed with leukemia in 2022. Last weekend, the boy and his family found out that Make-A-Wish has granted them their dream vacation to Hawaii. The learning experience on Old Fern Rock threw him a send-off party with everything from hula dancers to Chick-fil-A. Despite his diagnosis, Kelvin is still cheerful and loves the beach, playing soccer games and video games, and most importantly, he's excited to visit the beautiful state of Hawaii. His family says he is on the road to recovery thanks to a bone marrow transplant by Penn Medicine, and we hope Kelvin has the time of his life on his trip to Hawaii and wish him the best of luck on his road to recovery. Don't go anywhere because we have some more news on a tortoise in Brazil coming up next after this short break. Hi, I'm Joanna Van Fine, class of 2007, and you're watching LaSalle 56. It's LaSalle TV. Oh, oh, right, of course. All right, I'll do it again. Hi, I'm Joanna Van Fine, class of 2007, and you're watching LaSalle 56. And you're watching LaSalle 56. Oh, God. Hi, I'm Joanna Van Fine, class of 2007, and you're watching LaSalle 56. I can't do it. Hi, I'm Joanna Van Thine, class of 2007, and you're watching LaSalle 56. Oh, okay. Hi, I'm Joanna Van Thine, class of 2007, and you're watching LaSalle 56. It's right behind you. LaSalle 56. TV. LaSalle TV 6. LaSalle 56. And you're watching LaSalle 56. LaSalle 56. And you're watching LaSalle 56. You're old. Hey. And you're watching LaSalle TV. I did it. I did it. I'm not old. Did you know that listening to music, enjoying art, or simply holding hands can boost your cognition? Trying new foods, making friends, and being curious helps too. Just like me, you want to maintain your brain health for as long as possible. I'd like to share with you insights that can make a difference. I'm Kevin Jamison, president of the Dementia Society of America. I'm excited to offer you our free guide. Inside, you'll find 10 building blocks to better brain health, along with facts about dementia, care planning, and how experts make a diagnosis. You'll learn what dementia is and isn't. The Dementia Society of America is a nonprofit organization, and we are ready to answer your questions. Get your free copy of the guide by visiting 1-800-Dementia.org or by calling 1-800-Dementia. You want to live life to the fullest? I do too, and I'm confident that our free guide can help. A tortoise in Brazil has received another chance at life thanks to a one-of-a-kind, specially designed prosthetic. The 25-year-old tortoise, known as Philo, was left unable to walk following surgery to connect a seer reproductive condition. Now she can be seen zipping from place to place on wheels. After her surgery, which was unfortunately performed by a veterinarian who was not a reptile specialist, 
Philo suffered necrosis of the plasteron bone, which forms at the bottom of the shell. This led to partial paralysis of her lower limbs, making life extremely difficult. Through computerized tomography, her, wheel her wheeled prosthetic was designed and has since greatly improved her mobility. Philo has been testing the limits of her new device, which is said to be holding up well against everything she throws at it. In fantasy fiction, the dragon is one of the most common mythical beasts. But these giant flying lizards defy the reality that flying lizards have been found on Earth through many once upon a times. They were just really small. Case in point is the small fry from 200 million years ago, a canosaur, a flying reptile that, use, that used a membrane of skin that, out, that stretched out along a set of fantastically elongated rib bones that allowed them to glide from tree to tree. The discovery was made by, Un by University of Bristol master's student Mike Cawthorn. And the university press reports that he has been researching numerous reptile fossils from the limestone quarries which form Mandipaleo Island, the biggest subtropical island at the time when Great Britain was <laughs> archipelago. The Canosaur, discovered by Cawthorn, is not a true lizard and is more closely related to crocodiles, which for those interested in such things means it's classified as an archosaur rather than a leposaur. According to Mike Venn from Bristol School of Earth Sciences, it took a lot, to work, a lot of work to identify the fossil bones for most of which were separated and not in a skeleton. Who was co-author of Cawthorn's paper describing the various animals, maybe more fascinating creatures may be discovered soon. The world's largest cruise ship recently set sail January 8th from Miami, Florida, and there are some concerns about the vessel's methane emissions. The Icon of the Seas, which is 1,100 feet long and holds a maximum of about 7,000 passengers, will be island hopping for a week straight through the Caribbean. Environmentalists warn, however, the ship can leak large amounts of harmful methane into the air due to the engines being powered by liquefied natural gas, also known as LNG. Although LNG burns cleaner than fuel oil, there is a higher risk of gas es escaping into the atmosphere. Brian Comer, director of the Marine Program at the International Council on Clean Transportation, stated the environmental functionality of the ship's design was a step in the wrong direction. Royal Caribbean, the ship's owner and creator, however, says the Icon of the Seas is 24% more energy efficient than required by law. At a little-known historical site from the Mayan Empire in Guatemala, the jade funerary mask of a great king was discovered by archaeologists. In the country's northern eastern state of Penan, the city of Chachiquitam, which, which dates to the pre-classic period of Mayan history, was first discovered in 1909. But a chamber underneath the royal pyramid that had been missed by tomb robbers was identified using lidar. A team from Tulane University began exca excavating the chamber. Inside were a human skull, a stone coffin-like box, other human bones carved with hieroglyphs, funerary offerings of oyster shells and ceramics, and pieces of jade which, when placed together, formed the stunning mask. Francisco Estrada Belli, a professor at Tulane University, said, Everything suggests to me that this was a Mayan king who was a part of a network of Mayan ro royalty in the sphere of the influence of Tikal and Tichuan. It's believed the mask was an object used in royal ceremonies when the king would adopt the persona of a storm god worshipped by the Maya. One of the bones was carved with a depiction of the king holding a head of similar dimensions to the mask. Across Europe, particularly in Britain, people love to spend their weekends walking around with metal detectors, and dozens of dodecahedrons have been found across co the continent, including one found just last month in the English town of Norton Disney. These items date back to the Roman Empire, but no one knows what they're for. There are around 130 examples of these unknown items, and 33 of them have been found in Britain. Dodeca signifies, signifies the number 12, so it's a 12-sided hollow object and with round openings on each pentagonal face. Each point is embellished with a sphere, and the dodecahedrons are typically made of bronze, copper, or a mixture of metals and alloys. That's about all science knows for sure, and beyond that, hypothesis, hypothesis that they were ritual devices, weapons, personal ornaments, religious obje objects, and even a kind of precision tool have all been put forward. 
being that they, were, that they range in size and weight, the idea of a weapon such as a ball of medieval morning star seems unlikely. Personal ornamentation also seems beyond the pale since some are quite, are quite heavy and if stung around the neck would be terribly uncomfortable. A dodecahedron previously found by archaeologists has been inspected and according to their analysis was purposely buried around 1700 years ago. Today dodecahedrons serve essentially only one common purpose in our society as dice for playing games like Dungeons and Dragons and other tabletop miniature games. A critically endangered Australian marsupial is being seen at the greatest ever frequency since a government agency started working to conserve them. Australia is filled with the small endangered marsupials that have been overhunted by feral foxes and cats. The woolly, the herbivore, native to the state of Western Australia, is an unhappy example of the invasive predation. But the forest landscape three hours south of Perth a conservation program initiated by the Department of Biodiversity, Conservation and Attractions of Western Australia has recorded a record number of woolly sightings this year. 34 woolies have been trapped and tagged with GPS tracking anklets, where just two were found in the Batailing State Forest in all of 2019. With that being said, woolies are one of Australia's native ecosystem engineers, like bison and beavers in Europe and Northern America, meaning a species whose behaviors cause cascading changes that alter the entire ecosystem in which they live. Hopefully, we can make these little guys come back and stronger than ever. Well, that just about does it for this episode of LTV News. We'll see you next time with more fun and exciting stories, but until then, you can find us on the web as well as the rest of LaSalle TV on our Facebook and Instagram page. We'd love to hear your thoughts, so tweet at us using our Twitter handle and start the conversation. And if you missed a scoop and want to see it, you can find episodes on YouTube under our LaSalle TV Philly page. Thank you to our crew and viewers for helping make this show possible. And we look forward to many more successful episodes this season. So see you soon. But for now, I'm Jackie Reyes. And I'm Maddie Geyer. Don't forget to tune in next time for more fun stories. But until then, thanks for watching LTV News, where the action never stops.